Good morning. It is time to praise our God. Amen. Are you ready to worship this morning? Are you ready to praise our, our King of Kings? Our Lord of Lords? The one who's kept us all week. Amen. Stand to your feet and let's give God some glory this morning. Oh, 
Come on, let's just take this moment just to honor God. Come on, let's just lift our hands up in the atmosphere. Come on, let's just decree and declare that God is good and that he is still worthy. Come on. Come on, surrender everything to God. Whatever you need, God is able to do it. Whatever you need, I said God is able to do it. He's not a man that shall lie. He's able to do it. He's able to do it. Hallelujah. Songs in. Yes, the world will bow down and say you are God. Every man will bow down and say you are King. So let's start right now.
help me say just one. Three points right here. King of glory. Fill this place, God. Lord, we honor your name today. Just one. Lord, we thank you for being God all by yourself. Just one. Is there anybody any healing in this place? Lift your hands. King of healing, fill this place. Just want to be with you. Oh, I just want to be with you. Anybody need joy in the Bible? Says the joy of the Lord is your strength. King of my joy, fill this place. Fill this place. Just want to be with you. Oh, just want to be with you. Now come on and worship him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now God, God, I ask that you would touch this place like never before, God. God, I ask that you would throw your weight at this place, God. For the Bible decree and declare that the joy of the Lord is our strength, God. You is able to keep me from falling and present me faultless, God. God, now have your way, God. Move like never before, God. God, we touch and agree in the spirit, God. That you are still able, God. That you are still able to heal. That you are still able to deliver, God. That you are still able Set free, God. Set the captives free, God. God, we need your word. Send a revival, God. Send a revival, God. Send a revival, God. Send your healing. Send your healing. Now, God, whatever they need today, God, God, I ask that you will reach every need in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, touch each and every household. Touch each and every family member, God. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. It is so. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, God. And you're worthy. You're worthy, God. You're worthy. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Amen. Let's magnify him for he is worthy to be praised. Come on, let's stand all over the building. Amen. Let's give God the glory for he is truly the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. We thank God for all that he's done and all that he shall continue to do, Father. Come on in the room, Father. Lift the clouds, Lord God, from the north, the south, the east, and the west, God. Let us know, God, that you will perfect everything that concerns us, God. We glorify you. We magnify you. We lift you up for you truly are the king of glory. Come on, king. Fill this place, God. Fill this place, God, with your presence, God. Oh, with your anointing, God. With your mercy, God. And with your grace, have your way, God. Like only you can do, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many of y'all know that he's worthy? Hallelujah. He's worthy to be praised. From the rising of the sun until the going down of the same. Our God, my God, your God, he's worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Because he is the line of Judah. Huh? He's the ruler over everything. Amen. So we come for no other fashion and no other reason but to lift up the mighty and precious and powerful name of Jesus the Christ on today. And to all of you that are worshiping with us for the first time, we thank you for being here with us. And to those of you that are worshiping with us online, amen. Amen. We want to thank you from near and far. We know we have persons watching us from Costa Rica. and We just want to reach out to you and let you know that we are here for you and that we love you. We glorify you on today. Amen. Amen. I just have a couple of announcements and then I'll do the offering. Amen. Uh, but on August the 14th, which is next Saturday, August the 14th, we will have a service distribution day here from 8 a.m. to 5 o'clock p.m. We have partnered with so many wonderful uh, stakeholders and residents in the community, and we're so happy about what the Lord is going to do on that day. Amen. So we will have COVID vaccines. We will be offering uh, Pfizer for ages 12 and up, and we will also will be offering Johnson & Johnson. We have partnered with Blackshire Elementary School, and in partnering with Blackshire Elementary school we will be providing uniforms for over 400 students amen 400 students will get one uniform that's a blessing amen hallelujah hallelujah then of course that is our our monthly food pantry so come on out and get distributions for food if you know of some anyone that's in need please do not hesitate to come on out and be with us we'll also have hiv testing on site we got so many great and wonderful things we got food for the children we got ice cream we got snow cones coming we got so many different things in store for those within our community and those in the city of houston we know that covid this variant, this Delta variant is on the rise and we're okay with just having us here today. Amen. We know that some people are, are, are very uh, careful about coming into the sanctuary and coming into the church. So we want to encourage you, those that, uh, that we will be wearing our masks. We are social distancing here. Amen. We have temperature checks as soon as you come in. We started that on July 4th when we came back into the building, and we will continue that on. At this time, we have no plans to shut down. Uh, talking to Mark Boone, who is the president and CEO of Methodist Hospital, his encouragement to us was to make sure that we social distance, wear masks, and take temperature checks. We will continue to do that, and if there's for some reason that something else comes up different than what I just told you, we will be the first to get that information out to you. Amen? Amen. Amen. I want to introduce to you, um, I am a proud graduate of uh, Southern Methodist University Perkins School of Theology. And we, at the end of our uh, graduation, right before graduation, should I say, we all have to do an internship, amen? And I want to acknowledge our intern who's gonna be with us, amen? Stand up, Elaine, amen. Elaine Miller, she is going to be our intern. She is a Master's of Divinity graduate. Amen. She will be graduating in May 2022. Amen. That's a long road, but she made it. Amen. So she will be here with us and starting. It's our hope and it's our plan. Amen. To start uh, uh, our after school music academy. Amen. We're so excited about that. It kind of all depends on what's going on, but we're preparing. Amen. We have been blessed with so many different instruments, tubas and trumpets and clarinets and flutes and all kinds of inst musical instruments that will take place during that time. Elaine will lead that as our program director. Our musical director will be none other than the Lloyd Hughes. Amen. Amen. We're so excited about that. Amen. Also, I uh, want to just, just say, is or has Ori made it here yet? Okay, we'll wait until Ori comes in. Amen. We have a graduate on this year, our only high school graduate this year. So Ori is gradu has graduated and will be going off to college, and we want to share some love with her before she leaves. Amen. 
Amen. Now it's time for tithes and offering. The Bible says, give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, runneth over. Shall God give into your lap. Amen. We want to encourage you to be a good seed giver. Continue to bless the house of the Lord so that we could continue to do all of the magnificent and marvelous things that we are doing here at Boynton Chapel. We want to thank you for such an opportunity for allowing us to be the hands and feet of Jesus. Jesus Christ we thank you so we have a couple ways that you can give if you're here in the sanctuary you there are two receptacles in the back of the building and we ask that you give your offering through those receptacles you can also give online through givelify at Boynton Chapel United Methodist Church dash Houston you can also give through Zell at Boynton Chapel United Methodist Church UMC at gmail.com don't forget there's another way that we used to do it back in the old days you can still mail your tithes and offering into the church at 2812 Milby Street Houston Texas 77004 God bless you and we're so glad to have you in worship with us on today amen Amen. Hallelujah. I think we have a song that's going to come. Amen. Corey, amen. Okay. All right. Come on. Amen. God bless you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody just give God praise. Come on, praise him for all the good, mighty things that he's doing, that he's done, and the things that he are going to do. Come on, someone may be going through something in their life, especially in this time. We're dealing with COVID. We're dealing with uh, crime that's on the rise. But one thing we know for sure, that regardless of what happens in this life today, as long as we keep our soul anchored in the Lord, we know everything is going to be all right. If you believe that, just give God a hand clap of praise. The song simply goes like this. Oh, the songs keep on raging in my life. And sometimes it's hard Till the night from day Still that hope that lies within It reassures As I keep my eye upon the distant shore I know he'll be, be safely through this blessed place he had to pay. But if the storm don't cease and the wind keeps on And sometimes it's hard to tell the night from day. Still, that hope that lies within we sure as I keep my up on the distant shore. I know he leads me safely through that blessed place he had prepared. But if that storm don't cease, and just in case that 
are gonna get hard You're gonna be tossed by the winds and the currents that seem so fierce But in the world of God I got an anchor that keep me steadfast and unmovable It's by the time Storm, don't cease, and just in case, and just in case, the wind keep blowing in my mind. My, 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 my soul has been
many of you, your soul has been anchored in the Lord. Amen. No matter how the wind blows, no matter the waves in your life, no matter the ups and downs, the highs and lows, my soul, my soul, my soul, my soul has been anchored. Woo! the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's a good God. Anybody know that he's a good God? Anybody know that he's a merciful and fine, mighty God? Hallelujah. Come on, stand to your feet. I promise you I won't be before you very long. Amen. As we turn to Psalm 103, that's Psalm 103. Now, I didn't know what songs they were singing until this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. But when God has you on one accord, hallelujah. Oh, ain't nothing the devil can do about it. Amen. Hallelujah. Psalm 103, amen, amen. I'll be reading verses 1 through 5, and when you get home, if you would just read it in its entirety, I promise you, it's going to bless your soul long today, amen. And it reads as follows, hallelujah. I'm going to read it from the King James Version. It says, bless the Lord. Oh, my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. It tells us again, bless the Lord, oh, my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgetteth, forgiveth all thy iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases. Who redeemeth thy life from destruction. Who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies. Who satisfieth thy mouth with good things. So that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. Amen. Bless the Lord. O oh my soul. And all that is within me. Bless. His holy name. Amen. Hallelujah. As you take your seat, I just want to title this message quickly for you. Just for you. Just for you. Touch yourself. Say, it's just for me. It's just for me. Hallelujah. Just for me. Hallelujah. As people say by grace, church, we have a problem that affects every single one of us this morning. Our problem is this. We are forgetful. Oh, we can remember all kinds of things, especially what others have done to us or have said about us. But we tend to forget that which the Lord has done in our lives. We have a long memory when it comes to our hurts and our sorrows and our burdens, but a very short memory when it comes to recalling just how good the Lord has been to us. David also had this problem, church. In these first two verses, David calls upon his soul to remember what the Lord has done. He wants to stir up the inner man and get excited about what he has in God and what God has, the Lord has promised to do for him and in him. David calls upon his soul, amen, to do two things. The first thing he says is, praise the Lord. 
The word blessed means to kneel with the idea of adoration and praise. David knows that God is worthy of all the praise we can render to him. And David wants his soul to be involved in praising the Lord. <laughs> My soul's been anchored, amen. The best time you can bless God and pay homage is when you are going through hell. And you still recognize that he is worthy to be praised. When things are going on that you just don't understand, that you don't like, but you still lift your hands up and give God the praise anyhow. For I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise, his praise shall continually be in my mouth. God sticks out his chest and he says with such authority for every child that can bless him when they're going through hell, that's my child. <laughs> Secondly, he calls upon his soul to ponder the Lord. He challenges his soul not to forget what the Lord has done for it. By the way, forgetting is far more than just failing to remember something. The word carries the idea of turning from God to follow other gods. A lapse of spiritual memory which causes the saints to wander. David wants his soul to contemplate all the benefits which the Lord has given. The word benefits <laughs> means dealing it refers to how the Lord treats the soul. Sometimes the soul forgets just how good God has been and continues to be to his children. Church, it is not true that we allow ourselves. Is it not true that we allow ourselves to get caught up with the problems and troubles of this world so much that we forget where the Lord found us, what he did for us? And where he is taking us, we are guilty of allowing our eyes to wander away from God. We are guilty of allowing our focus to be man-centered, help me Jesus, instead of God-centered. Far too often we are guilty of forgetting what God has done for us. You see, the world around us right now is in a constant state of change. The world is at war today. The economy is in bad shape as well. People are having problems with their health, their homes, and their finances. Even the church is not immune from problems as people come and people go. Y'all know how that go. But I would remind you this morning that while the world is changing, while the church is changing, while your life is changing, the benefits of the Lord never change. Why? I'm glad you asked. Because he's a God who never changes. Amen? Church, sometimes, I don't know about you, but I'll testify. Because some of us act like we don't never go through anything. Sometimes my soul forgets just who God is and what he has done for me when I get so caught up with what's going on in my life. Sometimes I need a reminder uh, of the benefits I enjoy as a child of God. Today, as the Lord gives liberty, I want to point out the blessings the soul forgets. Church, if you uh, have allowed your soul to forget the things God has done for you, then this message is designed specifically to speak to your heart. If you are guilty of allowing the burdens of life and the actions of others to influence your walk with the Lord, God has a word for you. You see, these blessings and benefits I'm going to talk about today are for everyone who will come to God by faith. For I walk by faith and not by sight. First of them, I'm going to be quickly, I promise you, as a sinner, we've all have sinned and falling short of the glory of God. Remember last Sunday we talked about he took our place. Amen. Man's greatest need 
makes the tops of David's list. David uses the word, word iniquities. This word means bent or crookedness. It refers to that evil bit in our nature that pulls us towards sin. Oh, God, you know this is good because God got me preaching about sin again. It brings to mind the fact that I'm a sinner and I have sinned. But it also points out the fact that I am guilty of sin now and ever will be as long as I'm in this mortal body. Yet he forgiveth all the iniquities of the soul. That is, he takes our sins and put them away from him forever. He did this through the sacrifice of Jesus Christ on Calvary. Now all our sins, past, present, and future, have been forgiven, put away through the gift of God in Jesus Christ. So church, I just want to let you know, you can sit there and be cute if you want to, but I want to let you know that he forgives all iniquities. Every place that you went, every thought that you had, every word that came out of your mouth, every attitude you carried, every person you hung out with, every drug that you took, every time that you got high, every sexual encounter that you had, every lie that you told, everything that you stole, God forgives all of our iniquities. I don't know about you, but he cleansed me from my past. He continues to cleanse me in the present and his will continues to cleanse me into the future. Until the day when my sins will be forgiven, be left behind, and I will stand perfected in his presence in glory. Does that mean that we are sinless? Of course not. We sin and the accuser of the brother, and y'all know who I'm talking about, the devil. He stands before the Lord and points out our sins. But when the accuser points his finger at us, we have an advocate who y'all know I'm talking about, who was nailed to the cross, amen, whose hands were pierced, amen. We are talking about what sins, we do not know what sins you are talking about. That person is a child of God and they are righteous through the blood of the Lamb. All their sins are forgiven and all are forgotten. As a sinner, he forgives me. He, how could my soul forget that? How could I be so foolish as to become distracted from his glory by the mundane and trivial events that's happening in my life? Bless the Lord. Oh, my soul and all that is within him. Bless his holy name. Church, you could come and give your life to Jesus and he will wipe your slate clean. Won't he make you clean? Hey inside amen I think about it he would make me so clean inside he will change my life all around me he will free me from the bondage of sin and he will clean me up do I have any witnesses up in here up in here that knows that he forgives all of your stuff and he will make you clean inside ah oh, come on now he heals us the word says he heals us. I don't know about you, but I want to shout all over this place. Because I believe that God's going to heal this afflicted body of mine. Of all manner of sickness and disease. But he's not just talking about your physical healing. It is not always God's will to heal people from their physical afflictions. It is an emotional healing. A spiritual healing. A mental healing that he's talking about as well. He heals the sickness of the soul. Amen. Our souls are subject to many terrible malandries. Among them are hate and greed and jealousy and discouragement and depression and anger and fear and guilt and doubt. Just so too, too few to name. But just as surely as diseases of the body can take away physical life, the diseases of the soul woo, can deaden us towards the things of God and leave us lifeless and weak. 
Some of us have gone some places, said some things, done some things, made some decisions. And when you look back, oh, Jesus, over your life and say, what was I thinking? I'm giving God the praise today because he's healing me and he's healing me right now. Thank God he has a remedy for the diseases of the soul. So each day the divine physician, Jesus the Christ himself, visits his patients and through his grace, he tenderly and effectively heals all the diseases of the soul. Of course, the effect, to effect this healing, we must take our medicine. <laughs> How could the soul never forget the tender touch of the great physician as time and again he has diagnosed and treated and healed the diseases of the soul? When I think of the healing, the help and the healing I have received, what can I say but bless the Lord, oh my soul and all that is within me, bless his holy name. You see, church, when we met Jesus, he give, when you meet Jesus, he gives you stability. He drives out depression and oppression and gives you joy unspeakable and peace that surpasses all understanding. Do I have anybody who can testify with me that he brought some help to your emotional status? You used to cry all the time. Now you are dancing and laughing like never before. You used to, now you are dancing when there is no music. You are worshiping when there, no one has to tell you to worship him. Somebody say, he healed me. Won't he make you clean? Y'all know the pastor can't sing. Inside. Won't he make you clean? Y'all know it. Inside, one more time. Won't he make you clean? All right. Inside, one more time then. Won't he make you clean? Inside. So church, I don't know about you, but I'm going to give him the praise that I am not as messed up as I used to be. Any messed up people in the house? Anybody been messed up? I know you don't want to raise your hand because you think you cool as a cucumber, amen? But let me tell you something. All of us have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And be yet, while we were yet sinners, he sent his darling son, Jesus, to take our place. Hallelujah. So he healed me. Not just one healing, but he's healing me over and over and over again, in every arena, in every door place, in every area, in every broken place in my life, God restores my brokenness. Ooh, Jesus. But not only that, church, okay? We say he forgives us, he heals us, but he redeems us. Every soul that enters this world is a slave to sin. Amen. Thank God he saw the plight of lost souls and provided redemption for us. He saw our enslavement and he saw the ultimate destiny in hell that awaited every single one of us. But he wasn't merely content to see it. So he did something about it. He came into this world and paid the price for our redemption on the cross. So he redeems us from destruction from the trap and from the trap. But I don't know about you. As I was thinking about this message, I said to myself, where would I be? Where would I be? Where would I be if the Lord hadn't come to redeem me? Where would life have taken me if Jesus hadn't come along and taken me back? When I look back over my life, if he had not redeemed me, church, I would be on my way to hell and so would you. So don't judge me. Amen. But thank God he redeemed me. Do I have any witnesses in the house today that's happy that he bought you with a price and that price has been paid in full? Amen. It's not on layaway. Hallelujah. It's already been paid. So you can take it to the bank. It's already done. 
bless the Lord, O oh, my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. But number four, amen, he crowns me with loving kindness and tender mercies. The psalmist says that like a king passing down the power and glory of his kingdom to a beloved son, so, son the people of God are crowned with the blessings of the Lord's great kingdom. We are told that he crowns his children with loving kindness and tenderness and loving kindness responds to the grace of God that we receive. And I don't know about you and his tender mercy responds to his, carries the idea of his compassion and his tender love for us. His grace is matchless and marvelous. But his tender mercies are glorious behind vocabulary's ability to explain. This brings to mind the tender touch of a mother. There is something in her touch that communicates her love and her peace and safety and well-being. You know, I was thinking about the 11-month-old baby that they took to the hospital. When she got there, when they got there, they didn't have a bed for her. So they had to fly her all the way to Temple by herself. And her mother was so nervous and concerned about the baby. And when the mother got there, amen, the mother got there, the baby is hooked up with all kind of tubes and everything. Y'all saw it, amen. I'm not the only one that saw it. But when the baby, when the mother laid the baby on her breast, that loving kindness, amen, that tender mercy. The baby was quiet and still, so much so that God could do his handiwork and send the child home, amen, hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I thank God for his tender touch as I pass through this harsh and difficult land. You see, there, as I said earlier, there's so much that's going on, but there have been times when human touches and words were ineffective in the valleys of life. But even in the midst of those times, I have never been beyond the tender touch of the Father. Just to feel the feel of his hands as he reached into my heart was more wonderful than I can ever describe. Amen. My soul has been anchored. Your soul can't be anchored if you allow the Lord to touch you with his healing hands and his healing power. Yes, that's a real catchy song and we love it, but has your soul really helped me, Holy Ghost? Been anchored in the Lord, amen. I thank you, Jesus. You know, God moves in the realm of overabundance. He operates in the arena of more than enough. We like to say that Jesus is all we need or Jesus is all that we want. But if, if it ever comes to a place in your life where Jesus becomes more than all you need or more than all you want and he becomes all you have, you will find that he is more than enough. When he moves into your life, he will never be just enough. He will always be more than enough. Lastly, he satisfies my soul with good things. Good things. Good things. As our gracious heavenly father, he gives his saints the good things out of life. He does not always give us what we want, but he always gives us what is best. Those who rest in him and draw their strength from him will find that there are, they are in a constant state of renewal and a threat there and, and threat their potential. Spiritual stamina will never fail. Those who do not abide in him will have a difficult time continuing in the race. You must abide in the Lord. Those who are drawing their life and satisfaction from the Lord will display a youthful spirituality that allows them to soar above the storms and difficulties of life like the mighty eagle. Amen. But God is a good God. 
I have heard some preachers teach that as eagles age, their beaks and talons become encrusted with calcium. Thus, never the, ne neither is as sharp as they once were. When this happened, the aging eagle cannot hunt as effectively as he once did. As he ages, he also loses some of his feathers. And when this happened, it causes his body to whistle in the air as he drives toward the prey. This destroys his ability to hunt in silence, therefore, thus further reducing his effectiveness as a hunter. But when the eagle enters this period of life, he will descend from the soaring in the heights above and find him a peak in the rocks. There he will pluck out all of his feathers and beak and break off his own calcium and trusted beak, encrusted beak against the rocks. He will even snatch his talents, uh, scratch his talents against the rocks until they are reduced to nubs. At this point, the eagle is absolutely vulnerable and defenseless. Many eagles die, this die doing this process, church, because they cannot feed themselves or escape predators. But during this time, a wonderful thing begins to happen to those who survive. The feathers begin to grow back. His beak will also grow back. His talents regrow as long, as sharp as they ever was before. After a time, the eagle will step out on the rocks, flap his great wings, and take to the skies once again in victory. It should be noted, however, that I have read no actual science fiction, scientific evidence to support my information, but I've heard preachers say this, but many of us can identify with the pain the eagle experiences. We go through our own molting process from time to time. The eagle will only go through it once. The saints will go through it over and over and over again. But the answer, church, for both lies in getting to the rock, Ah, oh, that went over your head. Let me help you with that. You got it, Larry? Okay. There we can recover what we have lost and our strength renewed once again. I go to the rock of salvation. He can look directly into the sun and he can soar above the clouds. The saint of God, the saint of God who has been through the valley and has re been restored by the rock can look fall into his face and see his glory and can soar above the troubles and afflictions of life. Church, I just want to close this with you. When I think of how he has repeatedly lifted me from the jagged rocks of affliction and pain and restored me to me, spiritual strength and victory. I just have to say one more time. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me. One more time. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me. And don't forget his benefits, his benefits of forgiveness, of healing, of redeeming. Hallelujah. Don't forget his benefits. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, God. He's a good God. He's a mighty God. He's an awesome God. And he's a loving God. So I just want to encourage you on this morning to bless the Lord. Oh, my soul. And all that is within me. Bless his holy name. And if you read that hundred and third number of Psalms, the, in, in its entirety, every other verse says, Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Hallelujah. And then he will give you good things. Amen. Amen. Come on, let's give God a hand clap of praise.
Hallelujah. And if you do not know who Jesus is in the pardon of your sins, we invite you to get to know him on today. Amen. 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 Bless the Lord. Yes. Oh, my soul. And all that is within me. Yes, yes. Oh, I just thank God for such a wonderful and powerful message this morning. Amen. And, and I'm sure in listening to the message this morning, you were, had that feeling of reassurance that God is not only here, but he's able to meet every need that you have. So with that, I want to say to you, if you have not accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord, your Savior, your rock, then we offer him to you this morning. We're going to open up the doors of the church this morning. If you in need of a church home, we certainly invite you to consider us. If not us, then any church that's open in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The doors of the church are now open. Will there be one? Praise Him. Praise Him. Jesus. Jesus. Bless His Savior. stage of her life. She's already become a young lady. Just now moving into another chapter where God is leading her. So we, we I'm going to give this to the pastor and let her. 
We thank God for uh, Ori as she continues on to her next chapter in life by going off to college. And she's our only high school graduate that we had this year, amen. So we want to just bless her with a, a gift, amen. We wanted to let her know how much we love her and we thank her for what the Lord is doing in your life, amen. Tell us where you're going to school. Well, I'm going to school to San Jacinto College and I'm going to be managing in cosmetology. 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 Oh. <laughs> so we thank you. Thank we you. Thank for you. For those of you that do not know, she's an awesome. Amen. Yes. And we yes. thank her that she'll be here with us. So as we open up more, we'll be able to go back and minister to her in dance and she will be able to minister to us in dance amen because we can't dance amen Larry, can you dance i can't dance either amen amen so on behalf of deborah ain't this you come on come this way amen i'm just i'm just following orders today okay on behalf of uh, the scholarship committee at boynton we would like to acknowledge uh, Ori with a special gift, and we pray that uh, you come back and share that cosmetology with us. We need it, okay? <laughs> Thank you. Let us pray. Let us pray. Amen. We thank the scholarship committee for always making sure that our students are eligible to receive the grants, I mean the scholarships from our church. We thank you for making your contributions every year towards our scholarship fund, and we look forward to so many more receiving that uh, scholarship from Boynton to Chapel United Methodist Church. Let us pray for Ori, and we'll have our benediction at the same time. Eternal and everlasting Father, Father God, in the name of Jesus, we ask that you continue to touch Ori from the crown of her head to the sole of her feet. God, let her know that no weapon formed against her shall prosper, that she can do all things through Christ who strengthens her. And we call it already done in Jesus' name. Father God, we thank you for this worship service. We thank you again for those that are worshiping with us in person, as well as those that are live streaming with us and worshiping all over the world. We thank you for your many, many blessings that you have helped to bestow upon Boynton so that we can continue to be the hands and feet of Jesus Christ. Now, God, as we leave this place, but never ever from your presence, give us traveling grace and mercy. It's in the mighty and precious and powerful name of Jesus. Jesus the Christ, we do pray, and let the people of God say amen. 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 We'll see you next Saturday and next Sunday. God bless you. Amen. Okay. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and I'm